subject passes my comprehension that the mesmeric virtue can be communicated to inanimate matter is a physical fact of which I am as well convinced as I am of my own existence. The surgeon, a practical surgeon. James Esdale was providing documentary evidence of the efficacy of mesmerism as a pain-reducing strategy for undertaking surgery, and also is giving documentary evidence of hypnotic suggestion from a distance, without voice suggestion. So it raises the question, doesn't it, why does modern medicine ignore these historical scientific facts? I think it's a good question. We get on to Myers now. Myers needed to understand what it was that constituted this connection, this rapport between patient and therapist, between magnetizer and magnetizer. He called it community of sensation. The two theories to explain entrancement were A, an invisible physical connection, animal magnetism, and B, the power of voiced suggestion. Neither of these two theories could explain the observations of De Pisiger or Esdale, and many, I'm just skimming the surface here, because there's a huge mountain of evidence by researchers on these principles. I'm just pick two of three. Myers had a third theory that he wanted to test. And he says, the, ev the evidence for telepathy, for physical, sorry, for psychical influence from a distance has grown to goodly proportions, for a new form of experiment has been found possible from which the influence of suggestion can be entirely excluded. It has now as I shall presently try to show, being actually proved that a hypnotic trance can be induced from so great a distance, so great, and with precautions so complete, that telepathy, or some similar supernormal influence, is the only efficient cause which can be conceived. And he and Janet conducted these experiments with a subject, Madame B. Leone, Got a quotation here from Leone, where her her own physician, a doctor, Gibber, is um, influencing her from a distance. She says, "I know very well that Doctor Gibber tried to put me to sleep, but when I felt him, I looked for some water and put my hands in cold water." I do not want people to put me to sleep in this way. It puts me out and makes me look silly. So she's not even a willing participant. This is against her will. But she knows how to combat it when she feels it happening. She puts her hands in cold water and it wakes her up, brings her out of the trance. That was October the 3rd. On October the 9th, <coughs> Gibbert succeeds in a similar attempt and she says, well, she's in a trance, why does Dr. Gibbard put me to sleep from his house? I didn't have time to put my hands in my basin. <laughs> so Myers concluded that telepathy was the only explanation possible. And it reinforced the proposition for him that man is a spirit entity that occupies and possesses a physical form. So the answer to the question, how many people are influenced by spirit, if it's true that we are a spirit that occupies material form, then our spirit possesses our body. So that raises the question, can another spirit possess the body? And then we get into the murky area of what constitutes possession or influence. That's another very, very protracted debate.
Now, we move on quite a long time now because with the, the refusal of mechanistic science to acknowledge anything spiritual at the turn of the century, the emergence of Freudian psychoanalysis and Watson's behaviorism, anything to do with the spirit became a taboo subject. But there were still some scientists who wanted to know. How is this possible? It's a scientific fact. How does it work? So Russian scientist Leonid Vasiliev and the electromagnetic theory. Vasiliev was a senior neurologist at Leningrad University. Tested the hypothesis that the transmission of hypnotic suggestions were carried by electromagnetic waves which could be measured in the brains of agents at source and the percipients at destination. And this is still used today. You can measure the brain waves in a person using the EMG. What they did, they measured the brain waves of the agent, the hypnotist, and they measured the brain waves of the hypnotized at a distance. And there was correlation. So they said, ah, the suggestion is carried by electromagnetic waves. Not just Russian researchers, but throughout the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, scientists in Russia, the United States, Europe, England, London, SPR was involved, and they tested whether a person could be hypnotized at a distance. This is just some of the experiments they conducted and the distances involved. <clears throat> to see if they could prove that hypnosis at a distance was carried out by electromagnetism. And this is what one of them said. We must thus consider the possibility of catching in space a thought in the shape of an electromagnetic wave. This would seem to be one of the most interesting problems in the whole of biological physics. And isn't it just? One must, of course, realize the immense difficulties that stand in the way of detecting such waves. Many years of strenuous work will be required before isolating and demonstrating these phenomena. But they are inescapable. And this, I love this phrase. They are inescapably forecast by the ionic theory of stimulation. The transmission of thought processes through space provides a firm basis for an explanation of the phenomena of hypnosis. And this concept is of the greatest interest both from a theoretical and a practical point of view. These are serious scientists. But they're still working within a physical framework. Three-dimensional space from A to B through time. Four dimensions. Space one continuum. It could not be proven that these suggestions were carried by electromagnetic magnetic waves. They were not prevented by iron and lead barriers or the curvature of the earth. Thus, it was that because no one could provide an explanation that conformed to the known laws of physics, the experiments were eventually abandoned. The essential criteria is that these experiments clearly demonstrate that time and distance are irrelevant. A criterion that appears to be ignored in favour of trying to find a physics-based mechanism for the transportation of a thought from A to B. The thought doesn't go from A to B. 
because time and space in the subliminal realms of consciousness in the spirit realms does not exist. And there's the scientific evidence to prove it. And that's simply what it is. The man wasn't a theologian, he wasn't a spiritualist, he was a scientific researcher. And that's the conclusion he arrived at. So let's have a look at how research has evolved. We've got telepathic hypnosis, scientific research. Myers and Jenner. Then we have Freud's psychoanalysis and Watson's behaviorism has kicked all that into a cocktail. It's all shoved to one side. Chemical anesthetics as an alternative to hypnosis for magnetism. Now I'm not a medically trained doctor. I have worked in hospitals and worked in operating theatres using hypnosis as an alternative for, for gastrointestinal endoscopy. And the research there is there, the documented evidence is there, that hypnosis and animal magnetism are safe non-interventionist procedures. The altered state of consciousness is natural. And yet medical science uses dangerous drugs to anaesthetize the patient. Now what <coughs> happens to the patient's mind or spirit when the body is drugged? Out of body experience. It's another area of modern research that reinforces the proposition. Then we have the electromagnetic theory of telepathy, which has not been proved. And now we move on to what's become known as psi research, a shorthand for psychic phenomena, psi. I have students saying to me now, what is psi? And I have to explain to them, it's just the letter of the Greek alphabet. <coughs> Let's use the shorthand in place of psychic phenomena. But sign parapsychologists in universities now are searching for an explanation for sign. That's a blind alley. That's a cul-de-sac. Let's go back and call a spade a spade. Let's call it psychic phenomena. Let's call it telepathy. Let's call it spirit. Now this is interesting. Hal Puthoff, a laser scientist, physicist, working with Ingo Swan, psychic medium. Ingo Swan could look inside a box, a blindfold, looked inside a box with a mechanism in it, described the box, drew a picture of its mechanics, and interfered with its electronic output. And that was the beginning of the, of the Department of Defense, US Department of Defense, <coughs> a remote viewing project at Stanford University that went on for 13 years. Well, they wanted to use it for <coughs> spying on the Russians. Why were they doing that? Because the Russians were doing it. Why were the Russians doing it? Because you still had people who remembered Vasiliev. They knew it was a scientific reality. So instead of being used as a means of healing the sick, it's being used in, for war. I'm going to give a quotation now from Russell Tyler, he's still living. <coughs> At the end of the project in 1999, Russell Tyler wrote, 
we would say that we don't have to search for Psi anymore. But our task is to remove the barriers that we and our society have erected against it. When he says Psi, he means psychic phenomena. Our understanding of mind-to-mind -mind communications derived from experience, as well as science, offer us ongoing opportunities to achieve this goal. He wrote that in 1999. In 2003, a sceptical psychologist, William Broad, conducted research for three years in the university in the United States to test spiritual mediumship. When you hear people say there is no evidence to support the, this hypothesis, what they really mean is that they are not aware of any research or any evidence. But here it is. I'll read it to you. Concisely stated, the evidence compiled in this volume indicates that under certain conditions it is possible to know and to influence the thoughts, images, feelings, behaviours and physiological and physical activities of another person, of other persons and living organisms, even when the influencer and the influenced are separated by great distances in space and time, beyond the reach of the conventional senses. Because the usual modes of knowing and influence are eliminated <coughs> in these studies, their success reveals modes of human interaction and interconnection beyond those currently recognized in the conventional, natural, behavioral, and social sciences. Besides indicating areas of incompleteness and misapprehensions about such phenomena that exist in current scientific theories, these distant mental influence findings have important implications for our fuller understanding of consciousness, health and wellness, our typically untapped human potentials, and the spiritual aspects of our lives. written by a Russian scientist who conducted research and actually looked at his evidence. So, I've, I've made a note here, modern researcher William Braun does not recoil from the scientific taboo of using the word spiritual in his conclusions. But as technology is advanced, down this pathway, we've moved further and further away from our spiritual essence. In scientific terms, that is. However, again, what I've discovered from my research, and I've been fortunate enough to meet these people, Professor Alexander Almeida and Gina Bichetti. I'm sure they'll abscond me for getting their, the pronunciation of their names wrong, but I can't speak them with a Portuguese accent. These are Brazilian scientists. And they come to visit us here in the UK every two years. The next conference, Medicine and Spirituality, is scheduled for October 2015. Remote depossession and spiritist methods of healing the sick have been incorporated into institutionalized medicine in Brazil since the 1930s. <coughs> Amazing, isn't it? They may as well be on another planet. For all we've heard about it. But they come here every two years to educate our medical profession. Well, when I was speaking to the organisers recently, I said, <coughs> as conference organisers, you must hold a database of all the people that come to visit your conferences. They said, oh, yes, we do. I said, I'll be very, very interested to know which institutions they come from. 
It's a total thing. But they don't tell us. They come in anonymity. Because they're afraid of being called heretics to medical science. Isn't that sad? So what I've put together in the final chapter of my book is a research proposal that sets out a protocol to test the hypothesis that some people who hear voices are influenced by spirit entities and that hypnosis at a distance, clairvoyant, spiritist intervention can relieve them of their affliction. A scientific protocol. And I sent it to the School of Medicine at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, to Professor Alexander Moreira Almeida, and asked him what he thought of it. And he said, this could produce some very interesting results. So I'm just looking for an institution in this country that's willing to accept the challenge. Spirit release therapy, as it's been developed, and some of you have heard Alan Sanderson talk, as it's been developed in this country, is very closely linked with the spiritist methods of Brazil. It uses similar techniques. It's done by clairvoyance, by mediums, using telepathy. So the research proposals there's a list that I've thrown together. Domestic violence and sexual abuse, I know about. Tourette syndrome, I know about. I've treated cases. The proposal that I've written is for schizophrenia. People who hear voices, normally hallucination. The protocol can be applied at any of those groups. On my website, <clears throat> I've, I've posted a written transcript that's taken from a recording. I'm recording this, and it was recorded on this device. And I transcribed it and posted it. And this is the transcription of a case of a man living close by to me down in the south who was suffering from a physical medical condition and a medical diagnosis. And I said to my spiritualist medium in North Wales, who had no medical knowledge at all, which was good medium, I said, I want to know what troubles this man. I want you to tell me what his disease is and what we can do about it. And the transcription is there for any of you to read if you want to read it. This experiment assesses the accuracy of a non-medically trained spiritualist medium and her ability to identify a medically diagnosed disease. The case is also illustrative of the discovery of one earthbound attached spirit and one discarnate entity that uses energy for its own survival that is transmitted by a living human. The dynamic relationship between the disease and the discarnate entities is implied. So my final questions are, what is the unidentified experimental variable in telepathic communication? So for the parapsychology researcher, and I'll be talking to the parapsychology department in universities, I'm going to Northampton to talk about this in December. They are parapsychologists, and they are searching for an explanation for what they call Side. So what is that unidentified experimental variable that we can't put our finger on? Is it psi? Or is it spirit? Why isn't spirit identified as an experimental variable in scientific research? Is it because we can't see? Excuse me, but you can't see an attitude. 
You can't see an emotion. You can't see a thought. You can't see consciousness. The physicists would argue, ah, but you can't see a microwave, you can't see a radio wave, you can't see electromagnetism. But you can still measure it. Ah, you can still measure it. So why can't you measure spirit? Of course you can. You can measure the effects of spirit. You can see the effects of spirit. When a poltergeist throws something across the room, of course you can see it. So, which scientific institution in this country is going to be brave <coughs> enough to step up to the mark and say, OK, let's test the hypothesis. The Spiritists are holding these conferences. 21st of October, it's this month in London, just a one day thing. And there's the next one aimed at um, British medical science. So this is not all pie in the sky nonsense. This is serious scientific research. Thank you for listening. turn my cameras off mm -hmm. and I'll answer questions for you. If you have any. <laughs> okay folks, we have a little time. Anybody got a question? Mm -hmm.